Hello YouTube, this is Douglas, and this is going to be a more casual video than usual. There won't be any fancy editing, I just wanted to make a quick update to tell you guys about what I've been working on since my last devlog. Specifically, I've been working on adding a UI system to my custom voxel game engine. Every game engine needs a user interface system. You need to be able to display, for example, an options menu with labels and buttons and dropdowns. You need to be able to display text fields so that the user can enter their username and password. But this GUI system you see on screen took me an entire month to add to my game engine. And the astute among you, the Rust users, will recognize this UI by its default skin. It is coming from a UI library called eGUI which typically only takes a couple hours to add to a Rust program, not an entire month. So, um, why did I spend so much time on this, and why did it take so long? Well, the answer is, in short, I'm not working only in Rust anymore. Last September, I switched from just writing my entire engine in Rust to writing the backend in Rust, but exposing a front-end API in c -sharp so that people could more easily create secure, sandboxed mods for my engine. And this meant that I needed to find a UI library that would be compatible with C-sharp, because all of the business logic now, if you're making games in my engine, goes in C-sharp. UI is also very helpful to have during the development process, because you can make little debug menus and tools that show you what's going on inside the game engine, and allow you to tweak various values. Therefore, back in March of this year, I sat down and decided it was time to find a new UI library for my engine, one that would be compatible with c -sharp that I could just drop in. Because UI is, in my mind, a solved problem. It wasn't something that I wanted to spend a huge amount of time on. I'd rather be on the cutting edge, solving hard problems in voxel physics and rendering tech. And so I sat down and started Googling, and it turns out there are a ton of great libraries in C-sharp, like WPF, Avalonia, and Uno, if you want to build C-sharp desktop applications or mobile apps. But if you want to bring a UI system into a custom game engine, there's this one C library called IMGUI that has C-sharp bindings, and that's it. I looked around and there were a couple of other uh, C-sharp libraries for like mono game and stuff, but to be honest, I found that they were all either poorly designed or not really well documented, and I wasn't really satisfied with any of those. Now many people do use MGUI in their game engines to great success. For example, here's a C-sharp game engine, Concrete, that a fellow Voxel developer made, and it does look very polished and very well done. But there were two main reasons that I didn't want to use MGUI. The first and biggest problem for me was that it is an unsafe API. That means that if you misuse the IMGUI API, it's very easy to cause IMGUI to like dereference a null pointer or read an array out of bounds, um, and that leads to undefined behavior and can potentially crash your computer. I'm trying to develop a game engine that can run um, sandboxed mods that are potentially from untrusted um, websites or third-party developers, and so whatever APIs I expose to these mods, um, they need to be safe, they need to be secure, and any program that has undefined behavior is always insecure. So the fact that the I'm GUI library, even the C-sharp wrappers, um, were unsafe was kind of a non-starter for me, and I'm GUI's API, while simple, um, isn't that powerful. There. Uh, you can make custom widgets, but it's not super easy to compose existing functionality. I'm not a hu super huge fan of I'm GUI's API in comparison to, say, eGUI. And in addition to that, I'm GUI um, runs on just one big global state object, so anywhere in your program you can just call a static method um, and hook into I'm GUI, which is convenient, but um, it's dangerous if you have a multi-threaded program 
and my game engine runs both a server thread and a client thread, and I'm exploring doing some multi-threading in other ways as well for like the terrain generation. So I didn't want that sort of global state foot gun to even exist in the API that I expose. And so I sat down and I was really sad because like I couldn't find a GUI library that I wanted. I kept saying to myself, gosh, I love eGUI. I wish I could just have my lovely Rust eGUI library again. As an aside, I just want to say eGUI is, how do I say this? eGUI is a staple of the Rust ecosystem. It is one of the most well-designed Rust libraries uh, out there in my opinion, and it's an exemplar of like how to create um, a good and uh, foolproof API. Um, for example, in I'm GUI, if you want to create a window, you have to begin, and you have to call this begin function and then start adding elements um, after making that call, and then when you're done and you want to finish the window, you have to call end. But this is a sort of um, not a great design because it's very easy to call begin and then forget to call end. On the other hand, eGUI um, does something slightly differently if you have any sort of method that has scope like creating a window, um, that method will take a closure. So in eGUI, you create a window and you call .show, and you give .show a closure, and the closure is called, um, and you add all your sub-elements, things you want inside the window, in the closure. And so the, the static scope in the programming language reflects the UI you actually get. Um, and so, in my opinion, the eGUI API is much more user-friendly in this way because it prevents you at compile time from making these sorts of mistakes and also makes it clearer like what elements are being added to a window versus not, that kind of thing. Um, that's one of the big rules, I think, in designing clean APIs is you want to minimize the number of ways there are to make a mistake and you can often do that by trying to statically enforce whatever constraints you have in your API. Um, but anyway, that aside, like, I just think eGUI's API was better, and so I really wanted to just have eGUI in my game engine. But I couldn't, because eGUI was a Rust-only library at the time. So I moved on to working on some other harder problems like um, adding global illumination to my renderer. But anyway, uh, July rolled around, and I had a very busy month this past month. I went on a vacation without coding for a week. And then I had a two week long business trip out in Arizona, which was a blast, but like one week I logged 60 hours on my time card. It was like really busy. And so I didn't really have any time to work on hard voxel problems. I figured it would be a good time to come back and finally solve the UI issue because it's something that I could work on like on a, in a car or on a plane, that kind of thing. And so I decided, you know what? Forget about all those other libraries. I'm just gonna bind eGUI to C Sharp. I'm just gonna make a public C Sharp um, package that allows you to call into the Rust eGUI code. The only problem with this idea is that eGUI has over 200 data types and 2,000 methods that need to be exposed um, for the full API to be available. And if I were to do it all by hand, it would take, let's assume, say, I bind 10 methods per hour. That's decently fast. Um, writing th this code by hand, like writing a C-sharp method for every equivalent eGUI Rust method. There are 2,000 functions. If I can bind 10 per hour, that's 200 hours of my life I would have to spend just making bindings for an existing library. And at best, I put in about 20 hours per week on this project. So that's literally like two and a half months of my life. Um, at a minimum, it'd probably be much, much longer. So I wanted to find a better way than just writing the bindings manually. And I ended up creating, a, I think, a really interesting approach for generating the eGUI bindings automatically that I wanted to share here. So there were two main technical challenges to overcome in order to create an auto binder that could take in the eGUI Rust package and then spit out a C-sharp um, package that I could consume. The first issue was just figuring out uh, from a very basic perspective how C-sharp and Rust should talk to one another. And the second issue was figuring out how to gather enough metadata about the eGUI crate 
um, in order to like iterate over all of its functions and create equ equivalent ones for C sharp. C sharp and Rust are completely different languages and their types are very different, so they can only really communicate via C FFI, which means passing around numbers and pointers to data. Um, so in order to be able to pass complex objects and structure data between C sharp and Rust, I decided to use serialization. And basically the idea is that um, one nice thing about eGUI is that it's a very functional API in the sense that most data types are just plain old data and they're passed by value. Um, there's not a lot of mutability. In addition to that, most eGUI types implement the serde serialize trait, which means that they can be dumped to a byte array, which can then be passed to, for example, another programming language. Serendipitously, I found this crate called serde generate, which allows you to generate type definitions in other um, programming languages for serializable Rust types. And so what I did was I hooked up serde generate on top of um, eGUI's API, and I was able to leverage that crate to churn out type definitions automatically for the majority of eGUI types. So this solved the problem of how to let C Sharp and Rust communicate. I basically just take eGUI objects whenever I want to pass them to C Sharp, serialize them, and then deserialize them on the C Sharp side, and vice versa. So that was technical problem number one solved. Problem number two was figuring out how to gather metadata about the eGUI crate and um, use that to automatically generate function definitions, because unfortunately serde generate did not cover functions. And unfortunately Rust doesn't have a reflection system, and so there's not really a great way to get information about like what functions a crate has, except for the documentation generator. So um, the documentation generator for Rust is called RustDoc, and it spits out very detailed information about every function and type in a Rust library that's meant to be used to render like a web page that you can then read to figure out like what's going on in the crate as like a, a developer. Um, but Ru Rustdoc can uh, produce JSON and machines can read JSON. So what I ended up doing was taking the Rustdoc output from a GUI meant to generate documentation and extracting all of the like function definitions and types from that. And it was a little bit jank, but it gave me enough information that I was able to um, link every type that I saw in like the Rust doc JSON to the types that were created with Serde Generate. And basically by iterating over that JSON document, I was able to generate bindings for like 80% of eGUI functions in C Sharp automatically. And then the remaining 20% of eGUI I really did have to do by hand, but there were only like 400 or 500 functions to do. It didn't take as long as I thought it would. So in the end, um, I took the generated code and I put it online on my GitHub. It's completely open source, so hopefully this is a valuable contribution to the C Sharp community. Now there's another uh, alternative UI library out there that you can try eGUI.net. Um, check it out, link in the description. And for me personally, I now have full access to eGUI in my game engine, and my hope, because I really don't enjoy uh, UI systems that much, like I said, they're a solved problem. My hope is that this just works in my engine and I never have to ever think about it again. <laughs> I'll throw up on screen now um, the code used to create some of the GUIs you see, and you'll see how like short it is. It's a very concise way of creating GUIs. Um, but yeah, I, I'm ready to move on and start doing uh, some real voxel engine development again. Anyway, that's the video. Please leave a comment letting me know what you thought of this more casual rant style of video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.